So as I said before, I will be recording this uh, webinar. Um, it's the uh, second of our December webinar. And uh, the topic that we wanted to cover is uh, disbursements. Like, you know, um, as we've been providing this software for several years, uh, you know, what we noticed is uh, um, disbursement can be very confusing. Like, you know, people always uh, think like, hey, how do I manage this as part of my business? So the agenda that we have come up with for this webinar is, you know, what is disbursements? How you manage them? Um, then we asked of uh, we actually posed this question to you guys saying that why would you not do it out of trust account? What are some of the key benefits that we see and you know how should you do it? And disbursement, if not done from trust account, can be done using several means. They could be paid from your general account, your credit card. Sometimes you might have even paid from your own pocket. Someone else from your organization paid for it. How do you handle all these things? And then we'll talk about types of disbursement. Like, you know, um, you know, we have like, uh, it, it's billables, like our actuals. Sometimes you might have disbursements which are unit rate, like, you know, and we'll talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about various types of disbursements, mileage, travel time. We'll go through a concept called uh, recovery of expense. Uh, how does outsourced work, like, you know, fall into this whole category? We'll talk about that. And we will also end this with a very important issue, which is, what is the expectation of law society when it comes to disbursement? Like, you know, what are they, when you, let's say when you're getting audited, what are they actually looking for in your, uh, in your, uh, uh, you know, audit is what we're going to be looking at as well. So let's go to the next, um, you know, subject, which is what is disbursement? Now, I picked this out straight from the dictionary. The definition of disbursement is, it's an act of paying out or dispersing money for your client. So it's basically, even in the dictionary, they, they, they clearly say it's a legal term. Like, you know, normal people don't use this word. It's a legal term where a lawyer or some legal professional is paying out expenses on behalf of a client. So that's the definition. Let's look at it from layman's terms. In layman's terms, disbursement is nothing but expenses that you incur for your client. You know, these are the expenses incurred, you know, for your client by your law office. Right? Like, you know, your, your, your business has incurred these expenses and you need to recover them or you need to somehow pay for them using his money. And that's the whole idea. Now, we looked at the top definition. We looked at layman's term. What does it mean in terms of accounting? Accounting means like you need to record it and you need to balance the account of when it was spent, how it was invoiced, and how it was recovered. So the whole accounting balance has to be established for this whole series of events that are going to happen because of a disbursement. Now, what you will see is, based on how you did the disbursement, there'll be a workflow. Like, it'll trigger a series of what we call accounting touch points. And we will, we will show you an example how that will happen and what you need to capture in each of these moments. The reason why you need to capture that is the last line. What is the law society's audit, you know, what are they looking for in disbursement is, at the end of the day, they want to make sure that you maintain the books properly. So we'll go through what it is to maintain these books and, and delve into depth on what, what you need to do. Okay. So let's look at disbursements at the top. How do you manage disbursement and what makes it a little complex? Okay. Now, some of the key steps, and it doesn't matter whether it is trust or general, is when you actually paid for the disbursement, you want to record, like, you know, certain things. Like, you know, what was the amount that was paid? How was it paid? What was the reason for the expense? You want to record that. That's very key because that's the starting point of you, start, you know, starting with a disbursement. And the law society is looking for that. Accounting softwares are looking for that. You, as a business, also need to know that because later sometime you're coming back and you want to charge that client. If you don't record these things, you, you, you know, it's basically, it's going to become very hard for you to recover that. Now, along with recording the amount and the reason, you definitely need to record the client's name and the matter associated with the disbursement. Because if you don't do that, again, you've lost information regarding the disbursement because you can come back and say, yes, it is a court fee. That's correct. It is a disbursement reason. I remember it was paid on 2nd of December. That's great. The amount is 75, but who is it for? And I've seen this several times when we are supporting our clients, like, you know, they forget that 
who it is for and what matter it is for. Because the same client might have multiple matters. So the second bullet is as important as the first one, where not only you have recorded how it was paid for and you know, you know, the reason, you also have recorded the client name and the matter name. Now, if it's general, there are more steps. Like, you know, when it's done from general, the first part is recording the expense. The second part is actually making sure that you tell your client that you have actually had this expense. And the only medium that you have to tell your client that you have done this is raising an invoice. So you got to decide what portion of it you're going to actually invoice, right? Like, you know, whether you're going to actually invoice the entire thing, maybe you'll, in, in, you know, invoice only a part of it, or you can even have a markup. So you got to decide the portion, and portions can be greater than 100%, okay? And then you'll obviously do a pre-bill, be happy with it, then you will invoice it, and now you're waiting for your client to either pay you or some other me mechanism of recovering, right? Like, you know, if you have money in trust, you can move it, okay? And when you do that, now the second part of recording comes, which is like you have to record the invoice and you have to record the recovery process of when you did the trust and all that stuff. So the law society and the accounting software, right, what they are looking for is this part to explain your expense. And if it was general, they're looking for this part to actually say what that invoice was for and this part and how it was really recovered. So if you do all these steps, the journey of disbursement is actually complete. Like, you know, you started off with actually paying for that disbursement. At some point, you decided how you will invoice the client. And at some point, you actually raise the invoice. Then you decided how to recover it. So it's kind of the journey of disbursement workflow is complete. So now, with that being said, let's get into the next stuff. Like, you know, how did you spend the money, right, is the key decision point that you make that decides whether it was trust or not trust, okay? And this is where we want to pose a, a question, why would you not pay it from trust? And there are several reasons why it's actually good to pay it from trust. The fundamental reason why it's good to pay from trust is when you pay it from trust, you actually keep it very simple. There's only one touch point, which is like the expense happened and you actually paid it from his or her trust account. And that's it. So the workflow of the disbursement is complete right there. Like, you know, you basically took not your money or your business's money, you took like client's money that you're holding in trust and you transferred it to the final destination, which is the disbursement that you need to pay. A classic example is like a court fee or any other kind of fee where you can pay from your trust account, where they accept a check, you know, or that payment that your trust account actually allows, they accept that. You know, that would be a good way like to actually pay. Now. The key part after you've done the payment is obviously recording the payment, but there's only one transaction in trust. When paid from trust account, there's no process of you recovering, right? So because the money hasn't gone from your business, right, you're not recovering it anymore. And it keeps it very simple. You don't have to worry about HST. You don't have to worry about, you know, a lot of things. So that's why we want to pose this question to many people who don't even have a trust account, like to think about trust account a little bit more detail because disbursement itself justifies you having a trust account. Because a classic example would be like you have a client, you do all the disbursement for him, and he doesn't even pay you anymore. So now you're actually taking a loss and it's a hit on your business. While you had money in trust, you definitely paid out of trust because you kept the whole business process very simple and, and it's very easy. Now, I will shift gears a little bit here to demonstrate how simple it is. Uh, but before that, like, you know, because the money is not yours after all, it was that money that you're holding in trust for them and you reported it as a trust expense, at the end of the day, it's very simple and not a lot of, it reduces the amount of bookkeeping that you need to do to a very significant effort. So let's have a quick view at a demo. So for that, I just created this matter just before this uh, webinar. I called it Simple Demo Matter. And I'm going to take a small retainer. Like, you know, let's say the retainer was given to me uh, on the 5th, and it was like, say, $1,000, and the client gave me the check. I just put it in and apply, right? So now the retainer is actually sitting. And today was the date when I was supposed to pay the court fee. So I can say, new disbursement, paid from trust. I can say, let's say it's $70, you know, 
court fee obviously does not have HST or, or applicable taxes. You can just say what it was, and you can hit the question, you know, the, the check number, and you can say uh, court fee, right? That was paid to let's say uh, Brampton Courthouse. And you can even print a check, right? Like, you know, because you are going to issue that and hit the payment. Now the check will appear, right? And you can even uh, uh, kind of put a description. You can say like, you know, uh, court fee for, you know, matter PF-67-6245. Some detail that you want to act, uh, appear on the check and you print it. Here's your beautiful check that you can just run through your laser printer. Here it is, the amount, you know, everything is here, and it's all done. Now, the beauty of this handling it in trust is it's all over because there's nothing to recover. It's all money that left your trust account. It moved away. And now let's even look at it from an accounting perspective. So, you know, when I actually hit the question mark and I actually look at an accounting, accounting ledger, you see on 5th of December, you got that check. On 9th of December, you issued a check, check number 78, to pay the $70 from court fee. And story ends there for this person. So that's why when I go back to the presentation and we look at why not pay it straight from trust, it's purely keep it simple. Like it, it is like the best form of uh, uh, workflow process that you can keep it really simple if you have a trust account and you pay it from trust account. Now, there could be a million reasons why you didn't do it from trust account, right? But if you do it from trust account, it obviously simplifies your bookkeeping at the end of the day. Now, let's look at it. What does it mean to pay from your general account? Now, now when you do general, there can be a whole range of ways in which you did it. Like, you know, it could be actually your business account. It could be your business credit card. Maybe that day, you were in the court and you didn't carry any of these things and you had your own personal account, like, you know, your personal debit card or your cash, and you paid using that, like, you know, your own money, like owner's pocket, we call it. Like, you know, if you did that, what are the steps? So the fundamental step, again, you split it into two parts. The first is recording the expense and the amount when it happened, and then the second part is actually the recovery. So you record the expense information, and the key element that you need to Pay attention there is the date, right? Because you need to know when you actually did that. Then you record the amount, including the appropriate taxes. Then you record the method of payment. And then you need to also record the matter and the client to whom it was done. And you need to record, uh, you know, if the disbursement was paid from what means, like was it a, like a bank or a general or this. Now, before I get on this, sometimes like, you know, something that you pay out of trust might even have a tax component. Obviously, in our example, we made it very simple. Let's actually go through the notion of paying something from trust with tax. Let's say, you know, you paid from trust, again, okay. this time it is $113, because it's $100 plus $13 of HST. You can put it right there. And you can say, that was check number 79 that I wrote. And this one was an application fee, and it was to municipality of Brampton. Again, you can go through the motion of check printing. You can just say check print, payment. So now what you've done is, same process, you included the tax as well, but the process does not change when you do it from trust account. It's still that single ledger that you actually have put and everything is done here. So again, when I go back, click on my question mark, and I'm going to look at the ledger you will see that the ledger will be, again, very simple. The ledger is like $1,000 came in, $70 went off, and another $113 went off. So that means the balance in trust account is $817.00. Now, if you are an accountant and you want to go with that mentality, you want to actually see what actually happens in the back. I can show you in the trust account. So, you know, <laughs> this is the trust account. And you should now see, as it loads, the so I should see the $1,000 would have been on 5th of December, 
and it was fulfillment right here. You see that, the $1,000? And then today, the 9th, we have two credits. One is for $70, and other is for uh, um, your uh, uh, application fee. Now, let's even break the ledgers and see how the ledger was actually applied. So if I actually click on the description, it'll show me that obviously because the $1,000 came to you, it was debited into your bank account. We also marked as a liability because it is you, you, at the end of the day, you owe the, that client $1,000 if you don't do the work. And then as you're spending the money, you'll see the opposite transaction. You basically credit out of your bank account and you debit out of your uh, uh, trust amount client to indicate what it is. Okay? And the same, same thing for here as well. Okay? So it's very, very simple. Only one transaction marks it and you're pretty much complete with the process. Now let's go for paying from general, and we'll go by a use case for each and every uh, aspect, and we'll put all three of them and see how the difference can be. So when you pay from the general, the way you would do that is, obviously, you need to know who the matter is and what the client is, so you would choose that. And then you can say, new disbursement, and I'm going to use a very simple example here, paid from general. Uh, let's say it's a simple billable, like, you know, for example, uh, let's say some assignment fee, right? Now, in general, when you record it, you need to split the HST component from the amount that was spent. So you would enter here the same, I'm going to use the same example, let's say $50, because I'm going to enter quite a few, so you know, I want to. So $50 and then 13% of HST. If it is exempted, you can exempt it, right? But in this case, we are not going to exempt it. You can give the description what it was, like, you know, uh, what kind of, assignment fee, right, if I can type today. And in the bottom, you're actually telling the accounting software what kind of expense it was. You can say, hey, it was from my general account. And I can say, like, it was paid to, you know, municipality of Peel, right? I could say that, municipality of Peel. And maybe I wrote them a check, right? And I can say what it was, or maybe I used my, uh, you know, debit card, so I can say, you know, hey, it was a direct debit, right? Uh, or, or, you know, you can, you can say direct withdrawal, like, you know, you could give the method of payment because the law society looks for that reason, right? And you can hit the save button, right? So that's very simple general disbursement. Now, if that exact same disbursement was not done using your general bank, I'm going to, going to edit it, and I'm going to show you the top part remains exactly the same. It's still $15, you know, and 13% is a tax. That's not changing. The bottom, what I would have done is, rather than choosing my general account, I would have chosen it as my credit card that I use, and the method of payment would be, you know, my credit card, right? Like, you know, so that, that would be the only difference, you know, between paying with your general or your business credit card. Only the, you know, you're indicating how the expense was paid done a little differently. So to just show you the difference, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two, and I'll show you how the recording actually happens. I'll put the exact same... Uh, you know, uh, assignment fee, right? And this one, I'm going to put it for $60, just as a difference, right? And obviously, uh, you know, we said everything else is the same. We paid to municipality of Peel, right? Again, if I can type today. Obviously, we chose a different account, and we said it was credit card, and we applied the save, save, save button. Now, in terms of what your client sees, he would see he would not see your expense portion. He would see exactly like 50 plus HST or 60 plus HST. That's what he's going to see. But if you look at your, you know, accounting, it'll be different because you will see now that the ledgers will be in different accounts. Like so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first go into my bank account, which is my general bank account, and today I should see one, uh, you know, credit because you know. The 5650 was what I spent, right? Like, I mean, if I actually split it up, you clearly see that the bank actually withdrew 5650 while you marked $50 for expense on client and 650 was actually the HST. So we split it up there. And similarly, when I go into my credit card, I will see this, you know, the $60 plus the HST amount, uh, right? Like, which is 6780. As you see that, I'm clearly seeing that. And when I look at what it is, it's basically $60 of uh, expense 
780 is your HST, and at the end of the day, it was for paid from your credit card. So we are indicating that. Okay. Now, if it was not done from your credit card and you paid from your own pocket, you would do the same thing. You can say paid from general. This time I'm going to use a different amount, but I'm going to use the same assignment fee. Let's say it's seventy dollars, right? And I would not choose bank because there's no option here for my personal. It's not accounts payable, but I can choose owner's pocket, right? Or you can create your own pocket. You can say, you know, Amanda's pocket, personal, you know, you can do all these stuff, or personal credit card, like, you know, you whatever you did, you can say owner's pocket. And again, you will say who it was paid to. You can say municipality of Oshawa, right, and hit the save button, right? So coming back to our, you know, how you record it, Basically, all you're telling is how you spent the whole disbursement. So recording the date you saw was very important. We recorded that. You know, the software automatically did that. Uh, appropriate taxes, you need to calculate. I mean, you know, obviously, you don't have to use our software. If you're using, like, an Excel spreadsheet, like, this is what you would do. Then the method of payment, clearly, you saw, like, I, I captured it as a cash payment, or was it, like, a credit card payment, or was it, like, a direct withdrawal captured that. I recorded it right in the matter with the client information, and we also recorded it who paid for it, which account paid for it. Was it a bank account or a credit card account, or was it like an out-of-pocket, or was it even paid by someone else? Like, you know, so you, then you need to make it like an account payable and say, oh, uh, Jonathan, who is my uh, uh, assistant, he went and he paid. I need to pay him from the business. So you can record that and then pay him later as well. So just to quickly recap, trust. Very simple. We saw, like, you know, we just said trust account, bang, done. We wrote the check. It was done. Business, all we've done is we've recorded it, and we have also indicated, uh, you know, uh, where it, uh, you know, how it was actually paid for. Let's now move to the next, which is recovery. Now, recovery is interesting, basically, because just because you've recorded it doesn't mean that, you know, you, got, you can get paid for it, right? Like, first of all, if you don't have money in trust account, <coughs> Nobody's going to even pay for it unless until you actually raise an invoice. And the second thing is, like, you know, you also need to look at uh, if you have money in trust, you can't just transfer it to your general either until you actually raise an invoice. So some of the key points that we always tell people to think about is when you do a pre-bill and then you look at the disbursement before you actually raise an invoice is make sure you validate the date, the expense, you know, and, and the invoice, uh, yeah, you know, date and all that stuff, the appropriate taxes, just have a eyeball and make sure you, you're comfortable with all that and then ensure that the markup or markdown is all properly there. We'll come back to this markup markdown a little later because I don't want to introduce this concept too early, okay? And then you raise the invoice. So in, in our case here, I'm going to go ahead and actually raise an invoice, but before that, the key step is I'm going to do a pre-bill because if there's any mistake, it gives me an opportunity to actually correct it. So let me raise an invoice, and in this invoice, you know, let's see what, uh, uh, how the disbursement is actually uh, represented, okay? So I'm going to open this invoice, and you will see that it's still a preview, so it's not a real invoice, but it clearly tells you assignment fee, $50, HST, that much. Again, we put three assignments, right? Like, you know, so it shows you the other assignment was $60, you know? Subtotal, tax rate, and then the final. Adds it all up, adds up the HST, and that's the total disbursement that you actually are going to raise to the client to actually recover, right? So now going back to the slides, so we have kind of done this process. We're comfortable with the taxes, the amount, everything. It's time to actually raise the invoice so that we can get paid. So let's raise the invoice. So, you know, and um, you can even mark it as paid because you know you have money in trust accounts that you can be paying yourself. Um, so let me do that and raise the invoice. Now, when you raise the invoice, you're basically tagging these disbursements together and you're saying, hey, this is my invoice to which it belongs to. And when I actually now open this invoice, you should now see an invoice number. And you know it's not preview anymore; it's a final copy. So that's your invoice number two four four zero. Everything is laid out. You even captured things that you actually did from your trust account. So you can say, like, hey, $1,000 in this billing cycle, I transferred $70, you know, to pay this disbursement. 113 was actually transferred to pay this disbursement. 
that's the balance in trust to, you know, before I did the transfer. And after I do this transfer, $613.60 is what is going to be left. So you kind of told your client very clearly he has to do nothing, everything is paid, that's the balance in trust. Now if I go back to the slide, the next step is getting paid. Now, getting paid can be in several ways. Like, you know, you can either transfer it from trust because if I now go back to the software and hit the question mark, it will clearly tell me that the client, the client owes you $203.40 and you can recover it from trust. And that's the best thing to do because, like, you know, the money is sitting in trust account. You already got that on the retainer and you can, you can basically transfer it. Or maybe the client can say, hey, you know what, the $1,000 I gave you is not for this. Hold it. I'm going to send you a check for this because I saw this invoice and he can do that too. And then you can put that directly into your general and pay yourself. So the medium of how you're going to do the transfer is a secondary question. The first step that you need to understand is till you raised your invoice, you cannot even think about recovery. So in the general, there are, the workflow of disbursement actually has three parts. One is actually the first part that we saw where we put the disbursement. The second part where we raise the invoice, and now the third part, you know, where we're going to pay, uh, you know, um, our, you know, pay, transfer the money. Now, when I hit the transfer button, right, this is where it can be very interesting. So if you remember, the first two, right, were actually paid by my business. They were paid, one was paid from my business, credit card, another one was paid directly from a general, I can transfer that portion of the money to my business account, right? I mean, there's nothing stopping you from transferring the entire $203.40 to your business account, but the point I want to raise is that the last one, the $70, was not actually a business. So you, you can choose not to transfer. You can say, hey, I'm only transferring $124.30 from trust account into my uh, business account, and that check number is, uh, you know, 115, and you can hit the transfer button. And what you can do is, you can also go back to the matter and now transfer that last amount that was left, like, you know, the $70 and the HST, so then again, I'm going to hit the question mark, it's exactly going to tell me that there's 70 plus HST left, and that, you can actually withdraw it from your bank straight as a cash. You can say, hey, you know what, my trust account, pay me directly, right? You could do that. And that's how you completed the disbursement workflow. Again, as you saw, three steps. One, where I recorded it. Two, where I raised an invoice. And the third was how I did my trust transfer. So let's now look at each of these accounts. So when I look at my, you know, general account, you will now see that <clears throat> we would have spent what we would have spent, we would have kind of recovered. So in this case, like, you know, uh, as you saw, the assignment fee uh, was spent on the general, but you actually recovered 124.30 because you haven't paid your credit card yet, right? Like, you know, so, you know, that's why this amount is sitting in your general account. And when you look at your owner's pocket, there it will be like in and out. Like, you know, what you spent, you know, the trust account actually paid for you. So that's what you spent and the trust account actually paid for you. Okay, if you didn't do it this way, you actually moved it to your general account, then you need to do another process of taking that money from the general account and moving it to uh, yourself, like at some point. Like you'll walk in and rather than withdrawing the money from trust account as a cash, you'll actually withdraw it from general account as a cash and pay yourself. Because at the end of the day, everything has to match, right? Like, you know, what got spent needs to be matched. You know, the credit needs to be matched with the debit. So that kind of explains the recovery process for general, so which never existed for trust account. So in trust account, we never did a recovery. In general, because we kind of did that, like, you know, we have to do a recovery. Now, this is where we want to, ex you know, introduce concepts of types of disbursements. The reason why this is important is because recovery now has implications. Now, in the, in the use case that I demonstrated now, the recovery was very plain and simple. The recovery was plain and simple because I spent $79.10, I recovered $79.10. So it was like very plain and simple. But disbursements can even be more complex than that. We already talked about billable, which can happen in both trust and general, because like, you know, what you paid is what, you know, you paid straight out of trust or you paid, you know, out of general. Let's talk about the second one, which is unit rate. 
And why it is only general? The reason why it is only general is because <clears throat> the amount that you know that you are actually incurring in unit rate is not a concrete dollar amount that you're spending from trust. For example, let's say you're charging your client for fax or postage, right? You might have spent only 50, you know, 50 cents on the stamp. You can charge the client a dollar because that's your rate. That your, your business rate for stamp is one dollar, okay? Now, you can immediately question me, hey, I spent only 50 cents. Why am I charging a dollar? Because the client is getting, you know, um, a service here. Like, he didn't go to the post office and buy the stamp and, you know, tear it and stick it. You did the work for him. So that's basically the service fee that you're actually charging. And that's where, when you do that, you cannot charge it from your trust account. You need to charge it only from your general and recover it so that, like, you know, you basically are getting paid and you're actually making money. So let's use the, the, look at that use case now. So in my matter, if I do new disbursement, again, and this time I'm going to say paid from general, and I can say fax. When you say fax, you don't enter the amount anymore. You basically enter the quantity. You can say, hey, I'm charging you for 20 fax at $75 a cents a fax, and that's my HST. And you can uncheck this and say, hey, I did this fax from my office. Why, why am I you know, uh, going to uh, enter an expense? And you can hit the save button. Let's look at stamps, for example. You know, stamp, stamps are generally about, uh, uh, I'm going to use a easy number here. Let's say uh, a stamp is about 50 cents. I know it's not 50, but like, you know, I'm just going to use that as an example. So you went to Costco or Canada Post or wherever you went and you bought stamps. So you can say action, expense, office expense, and let's say, uh, you know, it was office supplies. And you can say, I paid, I bought 10 stamps, so it was $5. Right, like you know, immediately the software will calculate, you know. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, how do we? I paid five dollars, and then the software calculates with HST how much it is, and you can see how you paid for it. Let's say you paid it using your credit card, it's paid to, uh, you know, let's say uh, Staples, right? And you used your credit card, and you can hit this up. So, this is basically you're recording the expense for the item that you purchased, right? Now, not all stamps is going to go to Philip Philmar, right? He's only going to use one stamp or two stamps. So you can say new disbursement, paid from general, and you can say postage, right? Again, it's a unit. Actually, you're charging him a dollar twenty-five. Or you know, for this purpose, let me make it a dollar so it's easier. We bought it for fifty cents, and you're telling Let's say you consume four of that, right? And that's the HST. Okay, you don't have to put any expense here again because the expense is already marked there. You can hit the save button, right? Now, if you used all the 10 stamps, you need not have done the first step that I did. You could have done the whole thing here. You could have done it that way, but this is just an example. Now, again, this is general, general disbursement. So that means the procedure to recover is going to remain exactly the same. You're going to say, you're going to raise the invoice right and then once you raise the invoice you're going to do a trust transfer right and that will basically kind of show you how you know the money was spent and how, how the money was actually received so here in this case disbursement see now it's like units you can see amount was like 20 units or like four units the rate is here that's the total amount hst and it adds up and it tells you how much it is. Now, when I go back here to the matter and I hit the question mark, obviously it'll allow me now to recover that. I can say, hey, I'm going to pay myself $21.47. And obviously you cannot transfer what you already transferred. Those are all like, you know, already transferred. You can't transfer them. You can only transfer the new ones. So let me go up and transfer the postage and the fax. I can do it from my trust account to my general account. And I can write myself, uh, you know, the check, right? And I'm done. So that's unit rate. Let's look at other ones. Mileage, travel time. Uh, these are, again, very similar to unit rate, no difference. You can just say paid from general, and you can say mileage. 
like say, you know, lawyer travel mileage, assistant travel mileage, legal counsel travel mileage, paralegal tra counsel mileage, it's all like, you know, you, you just indicate that. And then you say, how much is your kilometers? You know, what's the rate? You can put your gas expense here, or you can you could have put it the other way I told you, like whatever suits you, and you can hit the save button. So to, to us, like, you know, um, mileage, unit rate, travel time, you're capturing them as different entities, but at the end of the day, it's the same way. You record them as a unit, send it to your client, the client will pay for it, and you recover it, okay? Let's talk about, you know, difference between actuals and margins in recovery of expense, okay? So billable is a pure recovery of expense where it was an actual. So you basically paid $100 as quote fee and you recovered it as $100 as quote fee. If there's a margin because of there's a service, right, then you need to enter that. You can say, new disbursement. It's recorded as a miscellaneous expense. Let's say some fee. Uh, let's say it was some uh, completion fee, right? Like, you know, completion fee, the, the, the person, like, you know, the municipality charged you $100. But guess what? You don't want to, uh, you know, um, um, you know, charge the client the entire $100, right? Because there was like, you know, there was some tip that you gave to the person who actually spent that. So you can say $100, and I actually tipped one of my, you know, uh, assistant $5 for doing this activity. I don't want to charge that to the client. So you actually now incurred more expense and you're charging your client less. So that's a good example, you know, of actual, it's not actuals, but it like, you know, it's like, it's like an undercut, right? Now let's do, uh, you know, um, a margin, right? Like where you're making money. So let's say you purchase some software, divorce mate or something like that, right? Like, you know, you can say, uh, divorce mate expense, right? Now, divorce mate might have given you some discount, right? Like, you know, you buy, you bought five licenses, right? And they gave you a discount of say 20%. So what you can do is you can say, hey, I'm charging you $100, but guess what? For five license, divorce paint gave me a discount, and you can say, hey, I'm that is translating to only $80 per this, right? Like, you know, that license, like, you know, maybe divorce mate gave you at a 20% at a, at a uh, saving. You don't have to pass that saving to your client because that was your skill that you negotiated that, but your client still pays, you know, what it, it would have cost him, and you can put that as a disbursement. Now, what is the difference when you do it in actuals and when you do it in margins? When you do it in margins, the HST that you paid for it and the HST that you collected in the, in, uh, that you're going to collect actually in this example, in the invoice process will not match. Now the difference is what you actually owe to the government or the government owes you. Like if you're taking a hit, like, you know, in that case, like obviously, like, you know, in, in, the, in the TIP example, like, you know, that's a, that's a bad example because in TIP there's no HST. The TIP portion is not HST. But assume that, like, you know, you had spent more and you charged less or in the divorcement example where you spent less and you charged more, the difference, the HSTs are not going to match. And, you know, the difference between the two is what you either owe or receive from the government. So that is the fundamental difference for a recovery of expenses where there's a profit margin, okay? So again, to summarize, you know, these ones, like I just want to go through them. Paid from trust, very simple and straightforward. Paid from general, basically it's actual unit rate, mileage, all that stuff you would put here. Miscellaneous expense, you would use it. Uh, a classic example is, you know, real estate uh, you know, or, or divorce, you know, anything where, like, you know, you're making money, right? Like you can say, you can even put facts here. You can say, hey, you know what, I had no expense, but I'm charging you $50 for facts. You could do that. That's basically like, you know, no tax, but like, you know, you're charging the client a lot of tax, right? Like, so that's where you would use uh, miscellaneous expense. Now let's go to the next one, which is a very interesting one, which is called the consultancy expense. Like, you know, a classic example of this is traffic ticket. Like, you know, you cover Toronto area, but your client had his ticket in Windsor. You are not going there. You're basically outsourcing this to your buddy at Windsor to actually do the work. And how do you actually record it and, uh, and recover it. Now, I'm going to show you uh, one thing before I actually do that. Like, you know, for consultancy, you know, we have special revenue accounts, right? You know, <clears throat> or, or sorry, our, uh, um, you know, 
expect expense accounts where you can create uh, for different consultants. Let's say we are going to use Megan. Megan is our consultant, and Megan is actually in Windsor, right? So we go to the matter, and we can say new disbursement, consultancy expense, and this is where you say how much are you charging the client. Let's say charging the client $200, right? That means with HST it's that, and you can say uh, consultancy fee, and you can say, you know, matter by Windsor Legal. Oh my God, I wish I could really type today. Matter by Windsor Legal Professional. And you can say how much Megan charged you. Maybe Megan only charged you 150, right? So put that, and here you can say it was, you know, Megan was the person, like, you know, that account, and how did you pay Megan? Maybe you wrote her a check, like, you know, the check number is 99, and hit the save button. Again, the process is still the same. You're recording what happened, you're going to raise an invoice, and then you're going to recover, right? But as you saw, consultancy, you went that extra step to capture Megan's information. Now, what's the beauty of doing that is at the end of the day, maybe you can look and say, hey, I, I, I thought I made so much money. I didn't look like I didn't, I, I didn't make that much money because I had to pay all these people like Megan and John and Smith. How much do I have to pay for each of these accounts? If you kind of mark them, you can kind of look at that. And I'll, I'll show that to you as an example. So let's quickly raise an invoice, right? And now it's time for us to bundle the whole thing, right? Like, you know, all our miscellaneous expense, markups, everything, like, you know, they're all bundled into this single invoice and let's recover it all. And then I'll show you quickly the HSC perspective and then we can come back to, uh, you know. So that's your travel mileage. That's how it should be reported. That's your completion fee, divorce made expenses, like, you know, or your consultancy fee. Like, this is, all the, this is what the client sees. Let's see how the business sees that. Like, you know, in, in, in business's perspective, Right, everything will be under an expense account. So if I would do like a classic P and L, like you know, just I'm going to, I'm going to do a profit and loss statement just for today, right? Like you know, uh, it's today is the ninth, uh, and let me do the download. It'll be an interesting because you will make a profit because like there were so many things that you charged that you basically you charge your client much larger than the amount that you actually paid for. So when I open that, clearly you see that, you know, there's a $154 profit just for today. That's basically because you had that much expenses. Megan, you paid 150. Other expenses on client was that much. Your office supplies, if you remember, and you disallowed that $5 tip was that much. So you add it up, subtract the two, and that's what it is. So for doing everything in the manner the right way, by just putting the disbursements, all you did was like, you know, you did only two things, like, you know, putting, recording the disbursements here as a general trust, miscellaneous, you know, doing the right job and raising the invoice and doing the trust transfer. You saw this beautiful report that came out that kind of like, you know, gave you an insight into the business today that you made $154, not on legal work, just on disbursements. And that's why, Disbursements are very important, right? Like, you know, if you, do, if you would not do this process, you would not realize this revenue at all. So now let's go back. We kind of looked at all these, uh, you know, uh, things. What is the loss of ideas expectations in all of this? Like, you know, so during an audit, you know, there are going to be two disbursement ledgers that the loss of ideas is going to look at for you. One is obviously your uh, client disbursement uh, from trust and your client disbursement from general. So I'm going to very quickly show that to you how they're going to look like. And our ledgers are very similar to the loss of ID ledgers. Now, in terms of ledgers, what are they expecting? The date, we already spoke about that, the particulars, receipt, disbursement, and the balance, how it was moving for this particular client in the particular matter. So if you remember all the key points that we talked about, which client, which matter, date, particulars, you know, this is what is expected in the ledger. So if I would do just a ledger for uh, today, I'm going to do a trust ledger, right? And uh, let me just, actually, I can just do, uh, you know, just download it. And you should see for Phil Philomar, we should have, you know, all the stuff that we did, like, you know, so in 
this case. So that's John Kent, Olivia, Phil Philemon. $1,000 was received on the 5th. $70 was the direct payment. The other $13 was also another direct payment for application fee. And all these trust transfers that we've been doing, bringing the trust down to this much amount. Right? So this is exactly what is expected, you know. This is a law society uh, um, bookkeeping guidelines screenshot that I got for you. And this is ours. Like, you know, same concept. Like, you know, you basically said, Client, matter, file number, and then the details, date, particulars, and you know whatever it is required, right? So now let's look at general. General is I'm going to do the same ledger, right? And I'm going to do general, and I'm going to do all transactions just for fill. I can just say I want all transactions, right? And you can actually search for the client. You can just say, I want uh, Philip Fillmore, right? I can download. And what it should do is it should show you all the general, right? Like the general is how, you know, what you basically invoiced, what you got paid, what you raised as an invoice, and then what you got paid. And now the last one, obviously, we just raised an invoice. We never got paid. So it's telling you that, hey, you know, he has to pay you 536.75, right? Like, you know, it's just telling you that. So that's the law society's expectation in terms of maintaining. Now, if you didn't use a legal accounting software, you need to maintain this Excel spreadsheet. You know, for this client, you have to say, hey, August 30th, I did that, court fee, that, like, you know, which I, I know I just produced it in one click of a button, like, you know, I said, oh, court fee here. Um, you know, assignment fee, assignment fee, assignment fee, you know, the three different types that we did, I just put it here. But in reality, if you don't do it using a legal accounting software, it need not be ours. You need to basically capture that. Like, you know, on here, see, they even break it up into amount and HST. So you need to do that. Like, you know, even we do that. Like, you know, break it out into amount and HST and say, hey, this was 5650 but it's actually $50 and 650 of HST. You need to break it up. Okay. And the reason why they do that is because, you know, here they're going to show you a summation of uh, the HST report, right? Like, you know, they're going to say, um, you know, this is what you actually got. Like, you know, that's why they basically are, are doing that. Um, but in our, you know, some legal accounting software, you can actually say, you know what, hey, I can pull out a tax report right here. I can say tax, HST, right? I can, I can just do, you know, today and do a download. And they'll just show me all the HST that I paid today and all the HST that I received today. Like here, here you go. All the HST that I, forget the 8th, let's focus on the 9th, right? All the HST that I paid today and all the HST that I received. Some of them are exactly matching, like, you know, 910, 910. This $13 is actually the summation of these two because I recovered it as a single, right? And this $13 is basically, you know, uh, the divorce mate, uh, if you remember, you charged, you got only 10, you know, you paid only 1040 because you got the discount, but you charged the client $30. So there you go, you, you made some profit, right? Like, you know, so, so let's say I'm just going to do an HST for today just to see, you know, what it says. So let's just do it for today. And when I do that, it should actually tell me that I owe the government, uh, you know, X amount of dollars. So in this case, I actually owe the government $20.67 for the profit that I made of $154. Okay. So let's go back to the disbursements. Next that I wanted to show is uh, journals. Same concept, like, you know, what is the law society expecting here is, you know, all your disbursement journals are maintained properly. Like, you know, you need date, method of payment, you know, who it was paid to, you know, I'll quickly show one for you, like, you know, journals, and you can say uh, general disbursement journals, and you can download it, and basically show, shows you all your, uh, you know, client-related expenses, right? Like, you know, it can tell you, like, hey, uh, let's focus just on the ninth, credit card, municipality of field, assignment fee, $60, that's your HST, right? Like, you know, that's your disallowed expense, if you remember, the completion fee, $100, $13 was HST, but your disallowed expense, 
for that one was five dollars. So it captures the whole range for you and tells you what it is. You can also do it analytics and it, this one tells you like hey rent was so much office supplies was so much and expense on the client was so much it kind of gives you like a nice analytical view but at the end of the day like you know this is what the law society is actually auditing you on like you know if you look here okay moving on next is SIBO now SIBO in the in the law society example if you follow it they don't have disbursement they just put the column but they don't show you anything in the example but you know, I'll just show you a quick uh, fee book example here. So let's just do for today, right? And the most important is classifying, uh, you know, the fee book for disbursement and uh, and uh, uh, legal account, uh, legal fee very clearly. And that's what you know uh, is the most important thing that they're actually looking forward when you actually show them in your disbursement. You're clearly saying, hey, that's a disbursement, and that's what I'm recovering, and that's your fee book. And obviously, the client was client uh, Philip Fillmore. Okay, moving on to the key benefits of doing uh, of using a legal accounting software to do all these things. Now, as you saw, there are like one, two, two ledgers, three journals, and one fee book that you have to maintain for the exact same information. Because all these things happen at different times, right? Like you know, if it's trust, you will only maintain it here. If it was general, this is when, you know, you actually uh, recovered it, right? In the journal, same way, like, you know, when you're actually recovering it. Fee book is when you actually raise an invoice that you haven't recovered yet. So each document, according to the Law Society, has a particular reason why they're actually recovering. Uh, you know, they want you to maintain a proper accounting software. Guess what? You don't need to do any of these things. They're like, you know, it just, you know, it does all everything what you get from the accounting software which is a report does all the stuff so you maintain none of the above documents let the software do the work based on the workflow finally in our opinion when you have a good legal accounting software it's all about compliance accountability analytics and ease of use right that's what legal benefits of using a legal accounting software now let's move to the benefits of managing disbursement now Clearly, in this webinar, you have learned that, you know, if you don't manage disbursements, you can actually have a loss, right? You know, you spent the money and you didn't recover it properly, or you over-recovered, or like, you know, there can be error, error in that process. You know, you, you want to do the right things so that, like, you know, these ledgers can be maintained very easily, and, you know, and, and it, things can be very simple, okay? Right? So getting paid for the expense that you incurred from the client is important, right? If you paid from trust, it's very simple. We learned that. But if you paid from general, how you recover it is very important. At the, it, it affects your bottom line. Your business bottom line and your profit margins are affected by it. Because if you don't have a plan on how you're going to charge disbursements, you're, you're not realizing the revenue, right? There is a risk of paying disbursements via general rather than by trust because now you're, you're basically hoping that your client will pay. And if you have a trust account, that's why it's there. You want to use it. Disbursements. Uh, can add to your profit if managed properly. We showed you clear examples. Again, the advantages of managing disbursements exactly the same, remain the same. It's all about compliance, accountability, analytics, and ease of use, right? Like, you know, at the end of the day, you want to make money. You, you, can, you can be accountable for that. You can be compliant about it. And analytics tells you, like, as I showed you, like, oh, this much was spent on rent. This much was spent on that. Like, if you could do that analytics and kind of realize you know, what you actually uh, spent the money. So that basically brings us to, uh, you know, our uh, uh, discussion on this webinar. Um, I'll quickly go back to the agenda, recap. We learned about disbursements. We kind of gave you key benefits of actually paying it from trust account. We talked about how to pay for different kinds of disbursements, like, you know, it can be general account, business credit card, you know, our owner's pocket, like, you know, we, we discussed that in great detail. We talked about several kinds of disbursements, billables or actuals, like, you know, how you put them, a general disbursement specifically, unit rate, mileage, travel time. Uh, we talked about recovery of expense, which is like, you know, where you spent X, and you, but you actually reported to your client, like, you know, that you're charging him Y, and you recovered it. So, and then we also talked about outsource work, like, you know, how that is also clubbed under disbursements. And then finally, uh, we talked in great detail about the Law Society's uh, expectation uh, on uh, disbursement, how you manage the ledgers, journals, and the fee book. Okay. So 
So that kind of summarizes our uh, chapter on disbursements. Let me open, uh, you know, the chat lines for questions. So feel free to ask any questions, and uh, you know, I'll be more than happy to answer. Uh, we have about five minutes uh, to uh, to answer the questions. Uh, I, we will be putting this entire recording uh, on YouTube, so you can watch it later as well if you have any further questions. But at the end of the day, like it's all about like you know recovering the money for what you paid, and if possible, making the right amount of profit as well. So I'll wait. Uh, at this point, I'll I'll go quiet and wait for some questions. I don't see any questions yet. Uh, by my memory, I can go through some of the questions that I generally get asked in support. You know, uh, is uh, you know, should I? No, you you should not confuse fee with disbursement. You should never confuse fee with disbursement. Like you know, because uh, if you confuse fee with disbursement, the problem is like you know, you kind of. Uh, are not making the money for the work that you're actually doing. So it's very key that you don't confuse uh, fee with disbursements. Um, now, fee in ULaw is very different. Like, you know, let me go into this exact, uh, um, you know, Philip Fillmore matter. All your fees would not be under the disbursements and retainer tab. They would be under the matter events, right? Like, and you can actually do fees in several ways, right? Like, you could actually do it as a contingency, a pre tax a billable, a flat rate, a pro bono, you can do all that, you know, interesting stuff for the fee. This one was specifically about this. Um, where should I remit taxes to CRA general or uh, a trust? Or, oh, you should never remit taxes from trust, right? Because that's your business expense, right? Like it's your business. So remitting of taxes never happens from trust account. It always happens from your general account. Now, the interesting thing is, in terms of disbursement, right? If you're only if if you make a policy that you're only charging actuals, right? You're not charging for all that other stuff, like you know, um, then uh, you know, basically, like you know, HST is very simple, right? You just go here and say action, and you know, what I would do is like click on the action. I can say transfer, and then tax remittance, and you can you, you, taxes are generally paid in either quarterly or yearly, so you can. If you had done a proper HST report for the quarter, you can say how much you collected. Let's say it was like, I'm just going to put like some 200. How much you paid, uh, let's say, you know, you ob obviously pay much low. Let's say you pay, you know, 100. The software will say, you know, the tax owed is 100. But in the opposite, you know, early part of your business, maybe you pay $300 of HST, it'll say, hey, tax refund of $100. So this you will enter when you get the money, right? The other one you will actually enter when you're going to pay the money. This is where you will raise a check for hundred dollars, right? Like, so that's how you would actually pay. Now, somebody asked a quick question: Is this one hour of uh, of uh, substantiated uh, hours? Unfortunately, uh, no. At this point, no. We've applied because, like, we believe this content is very important for legal professionals. Not many people understand the disbursements the way we want them to understand. We've applied for it. We've not got it. I don't think we will uh, get it in this year. Uh, hopefully next year, like, you know, we will get it. Uh, even if we get it, I think it will go into professional. It will not go into substantiative, I believe. But at this point, like, you know, obviously we don't have CPD to offer for this one. But even though it's not CPD, we really believe this is very, very, very useful information that you have learned today. Uh, hopefully, you know, the Law Society will look at our presentation, which we are going to put on YouTube and, uh, and uh, probably, uh, you know, uh, take it from there. Now, somebody said my sound was off. I really wish you had told me before. Uh, sorry, we will put this on YouTube. For you. Right? Like we'll, we'll put it on YouTube and it will have sound. 
So with that, I think, uh, you know, you guys have a wonderful uh, weekend. I'm going to stop recording and, uh, you know, see you, uh, you know, for our third webinar.